Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thanks to each of you for being willing to serve in the various capacities and the various offices to which you've been appointed. Uh, I'd like to start with Mr. Cisna. Um, I want to touch on something that has caught my interest for quite some time, which is parole authority under our immigration laws. Advanced parole, which DACA recipients can use in order to get permission to travel outside the country and then come back in the country, allows those same individuals uh, who are participating in this program to get around the otherwise applicable three-year bar and 10-year bar that might otherwise apply to their situation. That means that while it not while that program might not itself, in and of itself, create a new path to citizenship, this program can be used to circumvent, uh, to create an end run around existing statutory barriers to citizenship that, that would otherwise apply. Is that a fair characterization so far? I believe your analysis is correct, yes. Okay. So, and, and do you agree with me also that that program relies on uh, the, the statutory provision that authorizes advanced parole. Uh, yes, the process that you're describing does rely on the giving of the advanced parole to the alien. Yes. Okay. So it's important then to understand this program and how it works that we understand the statutory provision in question, the one that creates advanced parole, that authorizes parole, uh, INA Section 212 D5A. A and that statutory provision says that parole is available um, quote, only on a case-by-case -case basis for urgent humanitarian reasons or significant yeah. public benefit, close quote. I see you're nodding your head. It, is, it sounds like I've quoted it correctly. Uh, but, but it's interesting, the instructions um, for form uh, uh, F, uh, uh, I'm sorry, form I-131, uh, which, which deal with this issue, tell DACA recipients that they may be granted advanced parole for, quote, educational employment or humanitarian reasons. Educational employment or humanitarian reasons, close quote. There's no mention in that form uh, of significant public benefit, uh, nor is there any mention of the, the urgency requirement for humanitarian reasons. In fact, the instruction forms uh, uh, on that form I-131 go on to direct DACA applicants, that they may receive advanced parole for semester abroad programs. Uh, they may receive advanced parole for meetings with clients. So hey, let me ask you this question uh, in, in reference to the language of this form I-131. Do you believe that meetings with clients, uh, as a general matter, qualify as an urgent humanitarian reason uh, or as a significant public benefit? Thank you, Senator. I, uh, I know well this has been a long concern of yours and a long time concern of yours. And I, um, if confirmed, uh, I, what I would do with regard to parole just generally, not just with respect to DACA, but the use of parole across the board, is comply with the directive in the recent executive order uh, that directs the various agencies, including DHS, to review all the different ways that parole is being implemented, carried out, or granted. And that applies uh, to USCIS and to various other DHS components. Um, if confirmed, I would engage in that review. I, I think it's ongoing uh, and uh, carry it to its end. And one of the things we would undoubtedly look at is everything you just described, because that is part of the whole parole process. Would you be willing also to, to look at Form I-131 just to make sure that the language used in that form is uh, made to conform uh, with the statutory text in question from INA Section 212 D5A? Yes. Uh, the whole purpose of the review is to ensure that the parole programs uh, or the, the, the parole uh, uh, programs that are in place do comport with the statutory language. Thank you. Now, uh, the, the stated mission of USCIS is to secure America's promise as a nation of immigrants, okay. uh, in large measure by in, ensuring, quote, the integrity of our immigration system. How would you describe the state of the integrity of our immigration system today? Judges. Well, I think that uh, the, 
there are uh, there are innumerable programs across the board, ranging from immigrant to non-immigrant parole programs, uh, temporary protected statuses, uh, uh, innumerable different ways that the agency is, is engaged. I think that uh, there are certain categories of uh, of admission that perhaps are more subject to fraud or abuse than others, and if confirmed, I would surely. Uh, ask the experts at USCIS to educate me on what those categories are so that we can take appropriate measures to diminish that sort of integrity, uh, a damage to the integrity of the system. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, are you ready?